Meeting we had ample time and uh, and a nice little accident. Thankfully, it doesn't look like anyone was hurt, but uh, but we're here safely and we're grateful. And now you guys get to uh, we'll have a little like extra this. time. Before, okay, all right, you're good. Let and uh, I do want to do this before we start. Um, I have a gift for George and for. Paula. <laughs> Not for Paula. Right? Scott. And, uh, Scott. For Scott, for Scott yes. And, um, so there is a Bible museum in Barnabas area. And in that museum, they have a replica of the Gutenberg Press. And they actually print off of it. And so they have printed this on the replica of the Gutenberg Press. This is what Bulgarian language looks like, okay? And uh, this is actually John 3.16 oh, in Bulgarian. Nice. And, uh, and so we just want to give this as a gift to Scott. So there you are. Appreciate you, bud. And to George, just thank you guys for everything you do for us and helping us be able to get here, to facilitate, and uh, to be able to do what's in our heart to be able to do. So just want to say thank you. Um, I want to begin with prayer and then we'll get right into the presentation, okay? So we you bow your heads with me? And all I want you to do for just a moment is put your focus on your good father. Uh, think about him. Think about what he means to you. Think about the relationship you enjoy with Him. Ask Him to just still your heart for these few moments as we share and for God to speak. And after just a moment, uh, I'm going to ask, and by the way, what a privilege to get to say this. I want to ask Pastor Scott uh, to open us in prayer and then we'll start with <laughs> Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, what honor it is to know you, Lord, that you are the great comfort, you are the great physician, that you want us to be imitators of you, that Lord, you call us to edify you, Lord, and what a time this is that we can look at, that we can look at what can his wife doing in this time in Bulgaria, Lord, that they, they took the call and ran with it, Lord. What their obedience looks like, Lord, I believe it can be in all of our lives. Every day we have, we're on a mission, Lord, that you've already, that you've already conquered, but there is still an hour, Lord, and I believe if we're in the iron sharpens iron, Lord, and we can just encourage one another and build one another up and know what that armor of God looks like through obedience and your supplication. Lord, you just got us in this time to meditate and be grateful uh, just for who you are in your son Jesus Christ. Lord, thank you. Lord, continue just in this service and tonight, no matter how many people, Lord, we know what the scriptures say. Lord, we know you are here. We know that you can stir our hearts, Lord, and that's a beautiful thing, Lord, that gets me excited. Mm -hmm. Lord, I'm asking right now for the Holy Spirit to mm -hmm. transform hearts. Mm -hmm. Lord, please, thank you that I need this. In your beautiful name, amen. 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 Jane, go ahead and come on up, and uh, we're going to go ahead and get started. And, uh... I guess um, in our time in Bulgaria, we have probably been asked this question maybe a hundred times. Why Bulgaria? <laughs> Bulgarians want to know, why are you here in our country? Can <coughs> you want to go there? Go to the next slide, Paul. Well, and this little picture here gives several reasons why. First of all, just as, and you've heard me share this before, but Bulgaria landmass-wise is about the size of Tennessee. So if you get a picture of your mind of the state of Tennessee, that's the size of the country of Bulgaria. Population is of 7 million people. And of the 7 million people, it is estimated uh, that less than 2% are evangelical. Uh, and by the way, they use that term uh, very loosely. 
And they include groups in that evangelical term you and I would not agree with. Uh, several cults, several false religions uh, that don't even teach and preach the gospel. But yet, because it has a hint of it, they just group that into evangelicalism. And uh, so, when it says 2%, that's being extremely generous in that number. The city that we now live in, and we'll share more about that as we go, which is Vileco Turnovo, uh, it is actually less than 1% evangelical. And again, in that loose sense of the term. Meaning that you could find a Christian, maybe, in Vileco Turnovo, uh, and we have found some, and but they could spend their entire life, or you could be a Christian in Bulgaria, spend your entire life and never meet another Christian. Mm -hmm. uh, the other reason why, Bulgaria, is when you travel, you, you'll go into city after city after city, village after village after village, and you'll see a Bulgarian Orthodox church almost in every village, every town. And uh, you say, oh, they have a church. Well, you got to understand, what is Bulgarian Orthodoxy? All right? And after being there and hearing and learning, it, it's a combination of three things. Uh, it's a combination of men's tradition. Now, please understand, I'm choosing my words wisely. Man's tradition, okay? It's a mix of paganism. Uh, there are some practices in the Orthodox Church that are actually worshiping the sun god. Okay? Under the guise of a church. Uh, and then the other is superstition. Uh, much of the practices of the Orthodox Church is they believe if they do it, then they will have good luck. Not the blessing of God, but good luck. And, and that is the Orthodox Church. No gospel. None. And so those are the reasons why. Okay, next slide, Paul. In the first eight months, we were in the city of Plodna. Um, go ahead and go to the next slide as well. This was really a great city for us to uh, land in to begin with. We were with Jonathan and Amy Postaway. Amy's in that picture with me there, as you yeah, remember seeing her before. And this was a great place for us to begin. The postbooks took good care of us. We had a language tutor. And then we got to minister in the church there. This church um, is a bilingual church. So we were able to use our English to minister to the medical university students. There are medical students from all around the world. From like In this picture, this was a women's event. I see ladies from India. Zimbabwe, England, um, uh, Dubai, Saudi Arabia. All these are like ladies from all around the world. They're looking for uh, some player, somewhere to speak English because they're surrounded by Bulgarian as well. We get a chance to minister in this church because of their, our English while we're learning Bulgarian. So this was a great place. Go ahead and do the next slide for us, Paul. This was a Friday night Bible study that we were able to begin, and this is with the university students. So this was an English Bible study. Uh, there was a Thursday night Bible study that was in Bulgarian that Jonathan and Amy would lead, and uh, the Bulgarian speakers would come. So this is almost exclusively the university students. So when we began this, uh, when we first arrived, there was probably 10 or 12 university students that were coming. And uh, by the time we left and moved to Turnovo, uh, we watched that Bible study grow to just under 50. And, uh, and we just see their interest in God's Word. Uh, all of these are young adults making decisions uh, in their life right now. And so we just did some topical things that would right where they live. So we did a study, for instance, on uh, biblical principles on how to make good decisions and uh, things where they live. And they caught attention to that, a lot of interest, uh, and they just kept growing. The young lady you see in the center with the mask on. Again, remember when we got there, COVID was still going on and, and 
starting to phase out. And, uh, but this young lady, uh, she is Indian, but actually lives in Saudi Arabia, one of the medical students. And uh, when she was started coming, was not a believer. And, and she just kept coming and listening and asking questions and listening. And, uh, and I can tell you now, uh, she is now a sister in Christ. Amen. And wow. she is just dynamic in her faith and uh, just really strong in her passion and her love for Jesus Christ. And uh, the cool thing about this is these medical students are going to leave. In six years, uh, they'll be leaving. And they're going to go all around the world. And most of them will become uh, the probably one of the most influential people in their communities because they're medical doctors. And uh, if they go and they're now believers and they have a heart for Jesus Christ, imagine the impact <laughs> that these doctors are going to make around the world. So you pray for them uh, in what God is doing. But we wanted to show you uh, these faces so that you begin to pray for these medical doctors. Okay. The next slide. The um, the culture shock was real when we moved there. We go to a country where we can't read anything. The alphabet is totally different. We can't speak. We 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 sound like two year olds when we speak. And when it was really hard for us to go from years of ministering and being able to minister to sounding like a two year old wherever you go. So it was a blessing to be in Flavin. And here you see. Um, with these medical students, we got the chance to do Bible studies, and this is meeting and going through the discipleship curriculum. One of the ladies here is from, the lady in the back is from uh, London, Ekaterina and the French, she's Bulgarian. Um, I got to teach English. There was a conversational English club that was an outreach a way of um, meeting Bulgarians and, and sharing the Christ. So we did get to minister because we were in this area where English was spoken in this bilingual church. This was a blessing for us to have this opportunity. The next slide, Paul. Oh, it's a little <laughs> This is the village church. I have to turn the head sideways. <laughs> yeah, get out of the way so you can do that. This okay. is a village church um, outside of Cleveland. The lady in the center behind the guy in the white shirt, uh, Fatima has a white shirt on also. We met her four years ago when we went to Bulgaria to, for Ken to speak at a conference, and she was not a believer. Um, she w had a lot of problems. She came to the conference, wanted to speak with us. And in our conversations, we got to share Christ with her. One thing we understand, um, Bulgarians do not have any kind of spiritual foundation. So, you often have to share Christ, let them think about the Holy Spirit works, and then you continue sharing again. So it's a process. It doesn't happen instantly, right? But Fatima heard that heard the truth that day, and she was determined um, that she was not going to leave until she prayed and asked Christ to be her Savior, which was awesome. So now we have in this village outside of Cleveland, where she lives, it's just a small village, a small group of believers, they're all Bulgarian. So when we go there, we have to use a translator. But now there's a small church in this village because Fatima is there with her cousin and some other people in the village. Okay, next slide. This was this is the church in Plevin. Uh, all of the churches throughout the country are all called New Life. So you have New Life Plevin, New Life Schustoff, New Life Schumann, New Life Varna, and um, and Lord willing, New Life Vilek of Turnival. And, uh, and so this was the church in Clevin. Uh, this was our last service before we moved to our new city. And uh, so they were giving us a send-off. And they're just very sweet, very dear people. And, and I just want you to realize uh, what, what God is doing and what your giving is doing. And what your prayer support is doing. Um, I just want you to think back 10 years ago. This church wasn't even there. Okay? And so in a handful of years, look at what God is doing in, the, in just one of the cities in Bulgaria. And praise the Lord for it. Amen. Go ahead, Paul. Uh, while we're in Cleveland, we're also working on language, right? Language is so important um, to acquire because, remember, we're sounding like two-year-olds, right? It's hard to share Christ as a two-year-old. So our, our tutor is there in the middle. Uh, with the glasses beside me, and we got to know her and her family really well. The problem is, the only time she could teach 
teach us. And she's the only teacher we could find, 9 p.m. at night time. Mm. And I don't know about you, but it's really hard for me to learn anything at 9 p.m. at night time. All right, Paula, yeah. next slide. So we moved to Beleco Turnivo, and the reason why was because of language. Um, we were at the church in Plevin, doing well, loving the ministry opportunities, and we lived in an old Soviet block apartment. Okay, again, again, Bulgaria is part of the Soviet Union. Okay, and it was just a, and it was a big Soviet apartment complex, and uh, and so there was a little bit of a grass area to the side, and again, uh, Bulgaria for grandmother is Baba. And, uh, and so Bob, when there was a Baba that was working the garden, okay, and we got to know her and, and uh, became as good of friends as we could with her knowing one English word and we knowing about five Bulgarian. And, uh, but we just always shared hello, good mornings, and uh, very sweet lady. We're coming back from church, back to the apartment, and... We learned enough Bulgarian that we understood her question. And her question was, she knew we were Christian, she knew I was a pastor, but she wanted to know why I did not dress like the Orthodox priest. Okay? And uh, if it had been English, it would have been an amazing opportunity to share Jesus. Okay? And I would have taken it and would have had an amazing time sharing Christ with but she knew one word of English. I could speak about ten words of Bulgarian. And that was it. And so we left that encounter and she never got her question answered. And I left, to be honest, broken. Because there was no way for me to communicate Christ to her. Okay? And that real and we realized we gotta do something. Follow the next slide. Okay, so we moved. This is the Lico Turnivo. This is the city where we live now. It's right in the middle of the country. It's an ancient capital. Um, many, many years ago, it used to be the capital of Bulgaria. Okay, next slide. And this is another view of it. Uh, it's, you see, it's a beautiful part of it. It's, the historic part is beautiful. What you, you don't see here are the communist block apartments off the side. <laughs> Alright, next slide. Um, this is the street outside where we live. It's uh, like shopping Main Street USA. Lots of small shops. You go to the market. The groceries across the street. The bazaars down the street. Uh, it's very simple living. Next slide. Uh, you can go to, this is just a, another idea of what the street looks like. Okay, go ahead and do the next slide. Alright, this is why we moved to there. There's a university at the at the city, and it's a it's a university, a big university where they train teachers. They also offer an intensive Bulgarian language course. Yeah, so this was going to teach us Bulgarian language in seven months, and so yeah, it's pretty hard. We we came and we enrolled in this course, and we went to school. It became our full time job Monday through Friday, from 9 a.m. until 2 p.m. Every day, two 15-minute breaks is all we got. So after uh, Monday through Friday, every day we were exhausted and hungry by the time class was over. <coughs> so we ate, took a nap, took a walk, and then sat down for two hours of homework. So like I said, this was our full-time job as we learned the Bulgarian language. All right, Paul, next slide. This was our, our first class, first semester class. Um, I imagined that it would be a class of maybe 50 people and I could sit on the back and kind of, uh, you know, be invisible. <laughs> there are three students, okay? <laughs> Me and Ken and another girl from Greece. This was first semester. That's our teacher in the front. All right, next, next slide. Okay, so the question, you want to do this one? So if you wonder, okay, what's with the, the big gorilla? Okay? Well, the big gorilla, this is what language learning is like. Uh, you wake up every morning, you go to bed every night, and everything in between, the language part of it is this big gorilla that's on your shoulders. 
and you realize the magnitude and the enormity of it. And, but is it really important? And uh, go ahead and go to the next slide. Jane, go ahead and tell your story. So this is, it is important for relationship building. We've talked about that earlier, right? So you can share Christ. So you can know uh, their culture and understand why they think the way they do. For your own personal comfort. So you, doesn't, you don't always feel like you're living in an alien country. And I put the picture on there to remind me of this because one of the most overwhelming things for me was grocery shopping. Because they don't package anything like we package. They don't have the same things in the grocery store. They don't eat the same things we do. So it's very overwhelming to go shopping there. But I saw a jar and I thought, green beans. They don't eat a lot of green beans. And I was like dying for something from home, right? So I got this jar, took it home, was going to prepare it, took the <laughs> lid off put it in the pot, I'm like, oh, I'm going to eat one while it's warm, and popped it in my mouth, and it's a green pepper, it's not a green bean. <laughs> I, but of course, I couldn't read the label, right? Because it's so important to understand the culture and to learn the language. All right, next slide. But the really important reason is just it communicates a message that you love the people that you're there for. You're investing your time and all your effort into being able to understand their heart language. Yeah, just another thought with that is just simply Bulgarians, it's the height of a compliment that you're trying to learn their language. And uh, there are many other, for instance, from the UK, there's a lot of retirees. You can live in Bulgaria on their pensions and you can live uh, like kings uh, because cost of living there is so different. And, uh, but... They will tell you, the average person from the UK, they come and they don't want to have anything to do with them because the folks coming from the UK, they're not even trying to learn Bulgarian. Uh, and they're offended by that. And by the way, rightfully so. Uh, and so when they see, well, I'll say for me, all right? When they see a 61-year-old man sitting down with textbooks, flashcards, sitting down to try my best to learn. And then I tried my best to speak Bulgarian. And by the way, uh, Jane has finished her B2 level, which is very significant. Uh, I am at a B1 level, which enables me to have basic conversations. Uh, I can say, good morning, how are you? Uh, you know, if I go to a restaurant, function fine. What do we want, what to order? all those kind of communications, okay? And, uh, and when you go in, and it's funny because we'll go into a restaurant and we're just gonna speak Bulgarian. We're just gonna, we're gonna drop it on them, all right? <laughs> and so, so we go in, we say hello in Bulgarian, we need a table for two in Bulgarian, and, uh, and we sit down, the first thing they ask is, do you need an English menu? <laughs> so, so even in our Bulgarian, we don't have the accent. Okay, <laughs> and so it gives us a way. We're an English-speaking Bulgarian. No, we're Bulgarian-speaking, whatever. Um, I mean, to be honest, we stick out like sore thumbs. <laughs> but that—that's really our best hook, right? Because you know, when Ken goes to a cafe and spreads out, he does all his Bible study there, but he also will spread out his language cards. And they, they see him go to the same cafe two or three times a week, and they finally will ask him, <laughs> the same question we get asked over and over, why are you old Americans here trying to learn our language? They ask it over and over. And it really does open the opportunity to be able to share the gospel. Should and you tell them why? Yeah. And, and if we weren't trying to learn the language, they would just shut us off. Uh, but the fact that we're trying to learn it engages them that we care. And so that's why I learned the language. All right, next slide. This was our second semester class. Um, and by December, um, we were switched after the first semester. And we combined with another class. This was hobby day. And what I found is even in this curriculum at the college, I was able to share my faith. This is hobby day. I brought my ukulele. I had picked up how to play the ukulele about five years ago on vacation. Not very good at it, but I enjoy it. I brought it. 
and I was able to talk about it in Bulgarian, and I also played them a praise and worship song and talked about that. So just using all the topics that we talk about every day in class to, sh to share faith, to share who we are. And it has to come out, right, if you talk about who you are. And by the way, just a couple of things. Nicoletta from Greece, she was in the first semester. She, she stuck it out further than I did, because if you notice, I'm not in there anymore, all right? <laughs> I did first semester, and I'd had enough. Um, the guy with his arms crossed, his name is Nick. He is from the Ukraine. He is a Ukrainian refugee. Uh, they had to flee because of the bombing, okay? And, uh, and then the two in the back, uh, they're actually from Russia. And, uh, and so uh, quite a diverse group of people for that, for that small group of the class, okay? Go ahead. This, this is a, just Ken wanted me to put this picture in. So they got to see what the torture we went through every day. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a uh, explanation of possessive pronouns in Bulgarian. Um, and the teacher would fill up that board and about every 15 minutes she'd erase it and start all over again with more, more Bulgarian. So if you can see, it's a complex language, a different alphabet. And it was a lot of work. It was a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> Kids switched in December. He went with tutors. He had two great tutors who, who would teach him um, during the week. And the wonderful thing is these are two men, two Bulgarian men, that he's been able to form a relationship with. Yeah, and even began, both of them have made professions of faith, and uh, but kind of distant. Because, again, you know, there's not Christians everywhere. And uh, so they were a Christian here and a Christian here, kind of on their own islands. And we were able to begin to, so our, our, my, just, my lessons go like this. We, we, they teach Bulgarian for about an hour, and then we talk about Christ for about the next 45 minutes. And uh, we've had opportunity of praying with both of those tutors. They've become dear friends to me, and, uh, and God is doing a really good work, even through our language learning. All right, next uh, other opportunities for um, for ministry? Yeah, yeah this is uh, the church in Svistov, and uh, the opportunity been able to preach in each of our churches. And uh, this is a young man uh, that I'm very excited about. He translated for me that day and just does a wonderful job. But he's just, this young guy's got a great heart for Christ. Amen. Okay? Another opportunity the Lord's given me um, that I'm just very thankful for um, we have started the team, all the Bulgarian missionaries, uh, the Autrys, uh, Josh Provo, the Postawaits, um, Triff uh, in Varna, and myself. We, we have a four-year Bible Institute. And, uh, and these are classes that are being offered to young men who feel called to ministry. And, uh, and so, because the ultimate goal of mission work is to work yourself out of a job. Okay, because there needs to be a Bulgarian pastor in these churches, and not dependent upon an American missionary. Okay, does that make sense? Yes. And uh, so we're already praying and asking God, who are going to be these national pastors? And uh, so the one in the top, his name is Miko. The one on the left, or your right, his name is Miko. All right. So there for a while, I thought every young man in Bulgaria was named Miko. And, uh, but these are two young men praying and discerning God's plan. They both attend the church in Varna. And this is uh, the privilege of the class. This is a pastoral care class uh, that I was able to teach and, uh, and meet with these guys every week for about, well, for a semester. And, um, and we just had a great time teaching the, uh, the, the responsibilities of being a pastor. And it was a joy. Okay? The, um, when we moved to Veliko Tarnovo, we had a, a two-fold purpose. We had to um, learn the language. We knew that. But Tim Autry shared with us when we were talking with him about this move that he's always had a burden for this city. And he wanted us to explore whether there is a possibility <coughs> for a church. Uh, what we found that when we were both in the full-time class, it left very little time uh, for other ministry. So that's why we thought it was important in December for Ken to do a different type of language learning, 
to have more time for ministry. So I continued in the university and Ken uh, went with tutoring. Mm -hmm. And it was amazing what God immediately started to do in the doors he opened. So I started, we found that there was a, a we kind of looked around and we saw that there was a Baptist mission work actually in Turnabout, which surprised us. And uh, it was a missionary couple from Tennessee. Um, they had been there 10 years trying to get a church established. I think there was about six or eight individuals that they had been able to reach in that time frame. And uh, so when we were not in our different churches, we would go there and support that work and support them. And we found out shortly after we got there, they were going back stateside. Uh, the, uh, the wife, her name is Penny, her parents, uh, up in age and having a lot of health needs, and they just felt led for this season. It was time to go home and take care of her parents. And so, so they left. And uh, shortly after, we found out about them. And they, the six people that were there, basically the building, the lease was run out, and they were just going to dissolve. Okay? And, uh, and so we went to what we thought was going to be the last service at the church. And there's a guy named Sergey. He, he was there with his family. And then a, another lady shows up. Nobody knows. And she finally asks, are you Ken and Jane? And said, yeah. And said, well, Nick, my son, attends your class, your language class. And we've been inviting him to come. And so Nick was talking to his mom about this, who's Ukrainian. And again, they were there because of the refugee, because of the war. And, uh, and so she just came to check it out. And it just so happened, we found out the actual last service was the Sunday before. And so no one came to unlock the church. And no one comes. And so Sergey, who was attending, said, Ken, would you mind you and Jane coming over to our apartment and we can read scripture and pray together? So that's fine. So we go, we, and Helena comes with us, who was the guest, and then he asked, would you mind doing a devotion? So I did a devotion out of Proverbs 3, and uh, apparently it went okay, Scott, because they said, hey, we liked it, would you mind doing it again next Sunday? Yeah. And, uh, and so we come back to Sergey's home, we do the Bible study, and they said, would you mind coming back and doing it again? And the and interesting thing at this point, though, if you think Sergey's Ukrainian, and Elena and Nick are Ukrainian. That means they speak Russian, yeah. right? <laughs> so Ken is, is preaching in English and it's being translated to Russian. And we're thinking, no, we're learning the wrong language. <laughs> <laughs> and well, we're going to fast forward. So after, I don't know, three, four weeks, people just started coming. And I, I, and, and, and I want you to understand this. There's no explanation for this, what I'm getting ready to show you, other than God did this. Okay? And uh, go ahead and go to the next one. This is now our group. Okay? This is a group. It's a mix of uh, Russian, Ukrainian, and Bulgarians. All right? Uh, we've had over 30 attend. Uh, the, this group now is probably averaging around 27, 28 on Sunday. And uh, enough to where they're vested enough to where they're giving up their own money to rent this building. Okay, and uh, and so uh, the young man who you see sitting in the front with a jacket, kind of like a Letterman jacket with a white T-shirt, uh, his name is Tico Mir. He is a PE teacher with a local high school, and uh, speaks Bulgarian. He's Bulgarian and uh, knows enough English to where he and I could communicate. Doesn't know English well, but probably knows English as well as I, I knew Bulgarian. No. Okay, and. Uh, and so I asked him, I said, Tikomir, would you consider translating for me? And he said, man, I've never done it. And he said, but if you're trying to learn the language and you're giving your best effort, which I see, then I'll try. And so he has become my translator. So he's translating into Bulgarian. The young man who is in the back with the mask. Can you see him in the back? Okay, that's Nick. He is from Jane's class. And then the mom who came, that first service is the lady sitting next to him with her head down. Uh -huh. Okay, that's Helena. Nick, in that back corner, they're all Ukrainian, so they only speak Russian. 
Okay? And by the way, Russian and Bulgarian, two different languages. So it's not like, oh, they should understand each other. No, a, a Russian does not understand Bulgarian. Okay? Uh, it is that much difference of language. And uh, so, when, we're, when I'm preaching English, Tikomir is translating Bulgarian. Nick in the back is translating Russian. Oh, wow. Yes. Awesome. Yeah. Okay? Awesome. And, and look, you couldn't script it, guys. I mean, that is nothing more than what God is doing. Amen? And, and he just keeps adding. There's probably, you know, with the, all the other relationships we have formed through the different cafes and places, there's probably another dozen, 15 individuals that are beginning to show interest uh, that when we go back, we'll look forward to continue to do it. And, uh, and so pray for that group of people. They're still meeting with us here. Awesome. And, uh, and it's exciting to see what God is doing uh, in that group of people, now a church, and, uh, and just very thankful. So we just wanted to let you guys see, this is what you invested in. Okay? When you guys are giving, when you guys are praying, this is what God has done through your faithfulness to partner. And, uh, and you guys have as much in this as anybody else. And uh, so, thank you. Uh, thank you for your gifts. Thank you for your faithfulness to support us. Uh, thank you for your love for God and, his pe and people to hear the gospel. And, uh, and we just want you to know we have taken seriously uh, the responsibility of representing our Lord but representing everyone who has given a dime Amen. Uh, so that the gospel can be shared. And uh, so this is a fruit and an extension of the ministry here. And, uh, and so praise the Lord. So that's our presentation. Um, I do want to take a few minutes if we have time, and I know we're, we're, we've run over. And, uh, but uh, just questions. Anything you guys want to ask as you watch, maybe something stirred or a question popped into your mind and uh, give you opportunity if you uh, have any questions. Uh, we go back at the end, middle of August, so it's not that far away now, and uh, we'll be going back and, and, uh, and just seeing what God continues to do. And uh, we're taking it basically kind of a year at a time right now because, you know, I'm old. And, uh, and so and just seeing what God's going to continue to do if he passions our heart to continue, or if he's passioning our heart to do something, whatever next. Yes? Would you speak something in Bulgarian? Stood of eight day. Thank you. Cut, 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 I said hello, how are you? I thought you did. All right? And uh, so, um, it, uh, it is a difficult language. Um, you know, and it's, it's a three, three phases of it, because you can begin to read it, and then you can begin to hear it. Speaking is the most difficult, and the reason being is you constantly have to think. English, Bulgarian. <clears throat> now, the cool thing is we've been speaking enough in Bulgaria, there's certain words you don't translate in your head anymore. Uh, because there's a, when you first start, English, Bulgarian, speak. Okay? Uh -huh. But after doing it, for a while, especially familiar words, phrases, things you use every day, you don't think English Bulgarian speak. Now it's just Bulgarian. Okay, and uh, and so the communications we're able to have, um, you know, they're somewhat basic, but we can communicate enough to be able to do the things we need to do. Um, How do you say Jesus? Jesus. Hey, so, uh, yeah. Okay. Because when I work with Latinos, yes, it's similar. Um, God is Bog. Nice. Okay. The, the name, the name God is Bog, and uh, and so um, you know. And by the way, just a, another interesting thing about the Bulgarian language, it's the the Cyrillic alphabet, which is the Slavic language, is used the Cyrillic alphabet which is completely different than ours. All right, different sounds, I mean, everything. And, uh, but the two brothers who, I don't know if the term's created or invented, I don't know what you would call it. With, maybe yeah, the with, where they, yeah, where they pinned it yeah. so that it became a written language in the Cyrillic alphabet. 
uh, the brothers did it with the intent so they could translate the Bible. Oh, wow. That's why That's the Cyrillic alphabet was even even penned. Oh. Is because they they had heard God's word, but they didn't have it in their language, and they wanted it in their language. But to be able to do it, they had to have an alphabet. They had to be able to write it. And uh, so the brothers who came up with it, uh, that was their heart. They just wanted to see the Bible translated in Bulgarian. And, uh, and then it became Russian and Romanian, you know, the same alphabet. Okay? And, uh, so anyway, just uh, I, I thought that was pretty fascinating cult, uh, history. All right? Um, there was a strong Christian influence prior to communism. Okay? Uh, the reason why the Orthodox Church has lost its focus uh, is because of communism. Uh, during the rise and the, of, of the Soviet Union, what they did was they martyred, if you will, most of the high, high priests that were in the different churches, pastors, um, and replace them, and this is true, which is really weird, but it's true, replace them with KGB uh, officers. And so they were teaching communism in the church. And the people were accepting it as this must be the gospel. Okay. Mm -hmm. And killing wow. people and discouraging yeah. them from yeah. true religion. Yeah, so exactly. So, so how's how's safety in the crime over there? I mean, is it to be real, real honest? Uh, living in Bulgaria is probably safer than living here. Okay, all right. Okay. That's, all right. Uh, wow. <laughs> although we, when we first moved into our first apartment, um, yeah, it's not saying much, is it? <laughs> and so uh, the uh, uh, we got our tires slashed three times uh, when we first got there, and it was kind of. You know, Americans welcome to Plevin, and uh, and so and you got this this age thing. Um, people that are my age, probably probably 50 down, because I'm a little older than that. But 50 down, um, pro Western thought, uh, connect better with Americans, uh, people from the UK, um, English, because uh, there was a crossover where English is now the second language taught in the schools. Prior to that, it was Russian and, uh, during the Soviet days. And, uh, and so if you take someone who's 50 or above, they're very sympathetic to Russia because that's what they were trained all their life. Okay? And, uh, I mean, if you believe deception long enough, you believe it is truth. And even though it's still deception, it's truth to you. Okay? Uh, that's why it's important to make sure we know the truth of God's word. Mm -hmm. Okay. The, um, the country is very poor, yeah. and the reason why is because of the corruption in the government. Um, the mafia is a big entity there. Huge. Huge entity. So there's always the, um, I mean, just a simple businessman has to keep that in mind, and probably has to pay dues or whatever. You know. So it's a it's a it's a reality there, and it kind of keeps the economy or free suppressed. enterprise suppressed. And it's also a, a people are study just came out where they surveyed all the all the European countries. Uh, Bulgaria was ranked as the most depressed country in Europe, and uh, the people by and large are hopeless because of the corruption, because of the rise and fall of communism, because they hoped when communism fell uh, that democracy would be the answer. And, and by the way, it just shows you government is not the answer. The answer is Christ. Okay? The answer has always been Christ. It's not about a political party. It's not about an affiliation. It's about Christ. Okay? And because it is Christ that makes everything right. Okay, um, you know, man's fallen, and so it, um, and you know, they put their trust in this and this and this, and now they're just hopeless, uh, which makes it even harder sometimes sharing the gospel because it's like, yeah, 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 we 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 tried this, we tried this, we tried this, but as you live it in front of them, they begin to see there is something different. 
and uh, which entices them. So, do you have a question? Yeah, will you tell them? Uh, I think we have time. Uh, but uh, what you told me, the man that came and sat in your class and he had the scars. Yeah, so we were at, every year in September we have a Bulgarian national uh, where all the churches come together for a conference. Okay, it's in a city called Triavna, a beautiful, beautiful city in the mountains. I mean, just gorgeous. And uh, we meet, we have about three, four days of preaching, teaching. Uh, several folks who have made professions of faith are baptized during that conference. It's just a great time. This, this year, right afterwards, we had the International Fellowship of Free Will Baptists, which uh, these partnership countries come from all around the world. This year it was in Bulgaria. Okay? So we had churches from Bangladesh, from Pakistan, uh, different places all around the world that came for this conference right after our Bulgaria conference in Chiriabna. And, uh, and there was a pastor uh, from, what did I say, Pakistan and Bangladesh. Bangladesh. Uh, pastor from Bangladesh, young guy. Um, I'd say he's probably maybe mid-30s, okay? And, uh, and Jane and I had to pick him up at the airport. And, uh, and I just noticed in conversation talking to him, he had a short sleeve shirt on, scars everywhere. I mean, all over his arms. And, uh, and so I finally had a chance to kind of privately ask him, you know, tell me about those scars. What's, what's up with your arm? He said, they're all over my body. And he said, this is marks of my faith. Mm -hmm. uh, huh. And he says, so when you, and, and he shared this with everyone. He said, so when you pray for us, okay, in Bangladesh, don't pray that the persecution would go away because it's not. You please pray that our faith would remain strong during the persecution. Yeah. And that when I get beaten, he's had bones broken. Uh, I mean, there's, there's very little skin where you don't see scars on his body. Uh, where it's only because he's a Christian. Um, and so he just says, please don't ask for the persecution to go away because it's not going to. But just ask our faith to remain strong when we go through this. Uh, very humbling. Okay? When you think whatever we would label as persecution. Uh, and so, uh, yes. And we, we know that you're going to follow God's will as, as, as much as you can, but is there anything on the horizon that you see that's kind of a, a big thing coming up that you're looking forward to in particular? Or, uh, or as you said, one day at a time? To be honest, it's really been one, one of the things the Lord has done in us, and it's probably been the hardest thing for us, just to be really, really honest. God has stripped away so much. Uh, and it's been hard. Uh, I mean, we sold our home, we gave away our stuff. Uh, in fact, I told George this afternoon we got to go. We, we still have our, our, whatever you call those, storage bins here, okay? Because when Ed and Rachel were there. And, uh, and so we still, so everything we own is in a 5 by 10 cubicle, all right? And, uh, and there's a crate we got to pull out for some things we need. And so we're going to go over there and try to dig through the 5 through 10 cubicle this afternoon before church tonight and see if we can find it. But, um, but it's just been a stripping away. Uh, you know, and some of it, you know, it's hard, but the flip side is you're kind of grateful. And I don't, I don't, I don't know how to equate all this because we're still processing. Because uh, the, um, the, less, the least hard things now are the physical things you let go of. But it's the things like being able to being able to make plans, right? Ken and I are both planners mm -hmm. and we like we have calendars and we like to look ahead and see what's next. Yet we find ourselves in a place where we don't know what's next. All we know is we're going back to Bulgaria in the middle of August and see what God has for yeah. us then. And so that day to day obedience mm -hmm. is what God is teaching us. And literally, sometimes it is just day-to-day -day obedience. 
and that's and, all we have. Sometimes even hour to hour. hour. <laughs> to be and then just be honest. Because it, it is and that's been and you know and, and stripping away things like the American dream. Because it's not a right. Okay? And the truth is I believe in the American church it could be an idol. Okay? Uh, where we'd say no to Jesus because if I have to give this up, I can't. Uh, does that make sense? Yes. And, and it's hard because, you know, we have loved our time with our grandparents. And, you know, but we know in two months we're going to say goodbye again. Uh, and that is hard. And so, I really don't have an answer. Um, okay. Uh, but we're just trying to learn how to live by the Okay. All right. Yes, ma'am. Do y'all like the city you're living in now better than where you were at first? Go ahead, Jay. Oh, absolutely. 